you back. We're still in quarantine. Quarantine day number. I stopped counting because I'm bored as fuck. I'm going stir crazy. It's challenging my damn relationship. You know, we out here, you know, you, you know what it is, is like, I, I don't have an outlet. That's what it is. You know, no outlet for me uh, creatively and all that weird energy that I have. I go on to the stage every night and I fucking let that shit out and I don't have it now. So I'm just driving my girl crazy. <clears throat> but what it is, is like, you know, me and my girl, we're getting real close. We're already really close. And so now it's like moving to the next step. So here's a problem, though. When you like, it's my place. So we're here at my place and, you know, I... It's my place, right? So then, you know, you have your loved one come over, your girl or your guy, if it's a girl, if it's your place, whatever. Just just talk about for me. So they come over. It's not their place, right? But then when you're trying to take the next step, if I say, hey, move in, then it becomes also her place. But when it's just my place, you know, I, I'm an old dog. And this is from my girl's own mouth. It's like, you're just an old dog stuck in your ways. And it's true because my girl wants to like straighten up and like throw shit away. You know, do I need old ass candle? You know, like I'll have like old candle things. These are not old yet, but like down to the like, <laughs> like there's like just a little bit of wick left and there's some candle left. And I'm the kind of guy that's like, I can still light that. But then like, you know, when you put the match in, the shit gets all black. It looks terrible. It's ugly. She wants to throw them away, but she just wants the ability just to be like, I want to throw that away. So she throws shits away. That's hard for me to like accept. It's hard for me to be like. So I'm in a part of like, that's my stuff. Don't throw my stuff away. But if I'm telling her, move in, stay with me, you're here, it's your place too, then she should be able to be like, yo, I don't, this is messy and I don't want this fucked up candle being here anymore. So let's do something about it. So, you know, it's that kind of thing. It's challenging, like, you know, it's challenging in a relationship to like go to that next step uh, because you have to let go of a lot of things and compromise. (laughs) So I'm trying to be okay with it. But then, (laughs) so in the kitchen, she was straightening up the kitchen. She did some stuff in the kitchen. So I go into my, my fork and spoons and whatever drawer. And I used to have these like little spoons and I used little spoons for honey, you know, you know, cause you just want a little bit of honey. You know what I mean? And it's a little spoon for a little bit of honey. She don't throw them away. And she was like, that's a baby spoon. You don't need no damn baby spoon. You're not a baby. <laughs> I was like, it's not a baby spoon. It's a honey spoon. <laughs> so we got into like a little disagreement about, and I'm like, that's my spoon. You don't just throw my stuff away. And she's like, that spoon is stupid. You know, she just didn't, you know, and I was like, so in the heat of it, you fight over your pride and your ego and all that stuff. And then like, when, now that I think back on it, it's like, who cares? It's a dumbass spoon. If I want to get another baby spoon, I'll just go get it. But you know, it just, <laughs> those kind of things it's fucking challenging right so i don't know you know peace out peace peace and love to my girlfriend she uh she was right the spoon was stupid it's gone the dumb candles when the candles are done throw them shits away like i because you know you think like well, okay i'm gonna keep the the, the the candle glass i'm gonna clean the candle glass out and we're gonna save it for what what the fuck am i doing with that can-? you know so publicly she's right you know what i mean she don't watch my podcast, so she never gonna hear that I said she was right. <laughs> uh, but you know what's going on? Um, this is a special episode, bonus episode, midweek episode, because I made some Skype calls to, to some of my friends, just a couple, um, to a couple of them, and I'm gonna keep doing that frequently, you know. But uh, I just wanted to check in with you guys right now. You know, uh, on Instagram, I do my cooking. On Instagram, I've been trying to that. I picked up a new hobby during this. Uh, quarantine is cooking i never thought uh i was a cooker you know so you know i I like following the recipes i actually like following i get this thing from sun basket shout out to them even though these motherfuckers aren't giving me a sponsorship but shout out to sun basket because they send you everything you need with the the instructions the the recipe and you know whatever and then you can just like easily um you know, put it together. You know what I mean? And then it's, it's great stuff like meatballs, skewers, and, you know, pork chops. And, and I love the little side dishes like white sweet potatoes with cabbage. And they give you all these little like recipes. And it just makes you think about like putting together other things yourself, which is something that I've already done. I, I made like a, some white sweet potatoes just on my own the other day. So I'm picking up cooking, which is uh, actually pretty good. But one of the things I want to talk about is I went to the damn store, you know, so I don't know if y'all have been out to the supermarket, but this shit is bananas, man. So first of all, so I went to Whole Foods uh, because I'm bougie like that. And, 
you know, they had, first of all, you got to wait outside. You know what I mean? And so you got like the social distancing marks on the ground. So they, they're keeping everybody six feet apart, but still trying to stay open because capitalism's got to continue, right? So, <clears throat> so you got to wait to go in, you know? So then the lady's, you know, directing people in and she's covered up in like an outbreak hazmat type of shit. So you're like, okay, I don't know if that's really protecting her, but good for her. She's got her job. Everybody still needs to work. It's great. So she, you know, so you go, so we go into the store and this particular Whole Foods wasn't empty. It wasn't decimated, but it was a little bit like, damn, you couldn't find, if you were looking for something specific, the shit might not be there. So, you know, we found some things. It was like, you know, <laughs> I'm with, I'm shopping with Rachel and I'm like, she, I said, you want some cantaloupe? She's like, well, don't you want a whole cantaloupe? I'm like, Rachel, Rachel look around. There ain't no other cantaloupes around. We got to get the one that we get, you know, that we could get. Cause it's actually like that. So if you see something you like at the store right now, you got to just freaking grab that shit and go. So that's what I did. So we got that. You know, we got some other little things, some fruits and vegetables and stuff like that, just to like, you know, also just to be outside was great. But here's my thing with people outside. Yo, have some social distancing. We in a coronavirus medical alert pandemic environment. So keep your bodily functions contained if you can. So we in the fucking supermarket and we like, you know, got a cart and we're going and this chick just fucking sneezes. Just, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, not even trying to, like, you know, hey, Sneezy McGee, fucking cover your mouth. What the fuck's wrong with you? You know, she just with her man, they're giggling and laughing. I'm like, yo, you can't just be, listen, I'm not saying, you know, panic anytime somebody does, a, they clear their throat. You're not supposed to be like, you know, you know, oh shit. But hey, let's act like you know what the fuck's going on. Have some social fucking courtesy can't be sneezing and coughing and clearing your throat and like doing shit with your hands in these times you got to be aware of what the fuck's going on sneezy magoo is just running around the store sneezing up a storm not even acting like and don't be looking around like and i'm not saying you know you gotta like you sneeze and you gotta be like oh my god i'm so sorry oh my god everyone i'm sick i'm not sick I'm not saying you got to do that, but you also don't got to look at people like you, a gay couple at the mall holding hands, you know, looking for trouble. Like, hmm, what? Who wants to say something to us? Because that's how some people are acting right now. They out here acting like it's totally fine how the fuck they acting. It's like, yo, farting is the only thing. And that's not even acceptable. But at least a, you know, fart's the only bodily function that like, okay, if I walk through a fart, I'm going to be like, come on, who the fuck farted? But I don't want to walk through somebody's sneeze and cough. So we got to be aware of that. You know, look, I just touch them. And we don't, that's another thing too, is we don't know. We don't see how often we touch our face. You know, when you got a big nose, you always like on your nose, like, oh, mother, you know, uh, you, you're always touching your face. It's hard. We got to like learn to like do that, you know, washing your hands all the time, you know, which is something that we should have been doing anyway. Right. What the fuck's going on with this? Um, yeah. So, Washing your hands, uh, not touching your face. Just have some fucking social etiquette, man. It's crazy. You know, just chick walking around. And then, then we got up to the front of the register, and then she's behind us. And I'm just thinking to myself, bitch, are you following us? <laughs> you know what I mean? Are you, you know, and then it's like you're my, you don't, we don't know anything. Of, we don't really know how this virus works or how it's contracted or like, you know, we we know it's like close proximity and like, boom, you could get it from just touch or whatever. I don't even know. And, you know, so you, so you see in somebody that looks like they have no regard for human life, you know, doing whatever they're doing. It's like, I just was like so uncomfortable and I just hate that feeling. So we got to help each other out by like, you know, acting appropriately. Damn shit is annoying and even when you go to like to stores and stuff like i went to this taco place down the street from here because i gotta i gotta go get outside so i go for walks you know you go for a walk taco place still open you can order you take the shit to go you know what i mean but this dude so he got the gloves on at the at the counter you know he got the gloves on but he got the gloves on taking your credit card working with the register but he thinks that the like so he got the gloves, but then he goes over to where the food is and he's doing some other shit. And I'm like, dude, you got to have register gloves and then you got to have food gloves. Okay. So you, you, this, this shit can't fucking mix and match, man. 
I remember one time I was at Greenblatt's, this deli on, on Sunset next to the Laugh Factory. And there was this older woman in there, and she's fucking causing a ruckus, okay? Just one of these, like, you know, the world revolves around her, like, I want to try that. And, and you know, just making a fuss. So I'm waiting for my sandwich, okay? And she's one of these, like, I want to try. So they give, they give you a spoon. So they give you a spoon of whatever she want to try. She takes the spoon. She eats it off the spoon. Then my sandwich gets ready. It's wrapped. And she, they put it on top of the counter. Crazy woman takes her spoon out of her mouth and then leans her ma- spoon on my sandwich. Okay? She was already causing a, a disturbance for everybody. And she just did it and just was like, you know, man. <laughs> dude, I looked at the dude. He looked at me. I, I didn't, I didn't want to make a scene because she was already making a scene. Just Because I wanted to be like, yo, bitch. Um... Did you just put your dirty mouth spoon on my fucking sandwich on top here? You know, you're making a ruckus about what's going on in here. But I said all that with a look that I gave to the guy behind. And he looked at me and he was like, don't worry, I'm going to rewrap it for you. And it's like, it's just like people just, that's how, this was before the coronavirus. Can you imagine now? That's kill a bitch situation. <laughs> Kick her in her shins and be like, get her. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was, we, we on high alert. So I don't know. And then this, the, the gun store situation. So I went on a walk. I was walking around my neighborhood and I didn't realize there was a gun store like two streets over. It's actually like a mile away because I went on a long walk. So, you know, get over and I'm like, there's a line outside this store. And I'm like, what the fuck's going on in here? And there's a gun store. And I'm like, damn, what, what are we arming for? Like, what are we arming for? Who are you, who, who are you getting guns for? What you going to do? If you're a gun enthusiast, I'm with you. If you're somebody that's normally got guns, but I hate to think that like just regular Joe Schmo has a gun now and they just like, they going to hear a wrong noise and what they going to fire out their door. Like, damn, let's, let's calm down people. Calm the fuck down. Shit. People out here crazy. Whew. All right. I don't know if that, I think that might be all the bitching I have in me for the beginning of this episode right now. <laughs> you know, because I just I'm telling you, I'm go- I am I am legitimately this is this is more difficult than I thought. I mean, I'm just I'm not a shut in type of person. Like I've been in my place for two or three days. You know, you come back from a trip, I'm decompressing, but to like this kind of forced um forced quarantine, forced isolation is like weird. You start, you know. You start looking at your place like it's not big enough, or you start looking at all the things like this isn't enough. That's not enough, <sighs> you know. The shit, the, shit, the shit is bizarre. And then you, you know, then we everybody's Instagram and live. You know, luckily I was already Instagram live in my cooking before this shit. So, but I, now I feel like I'm one of these people. I, I saw I went on Justin Bieber went live today, so he goes live and. He's in one of his rooms in his big ass house, I'm sure. And he's got a huge wall screen TV movie room type situation. And he's playing video games. So, like, you don't know this until he turns on the live, he puts the phone behind him back here, and then he turns and he's just playing video games. And it was like 35, 40,000 people watching the back of Justin Bieber's head, watching him play video games. And I was like, just looking at it for a while, like, even I was like, what the fuck am I, what is, what is happening? <laughs> I'm just like, this mother, this motherfucker just, he, he not doing anything. It's just so fascinating to see like what is, what's happening right now. And, it, you know, on the, on the internet, just everybody's live all the time, you know, talking about this and that and like, oh, and so, but hey, I'm not, I shouldn't knock it. I'm not necessarily knocking it. It's just like. You know, it, it just reminds you of how isolated we really are. You know, we really isolated. But just work on your relationships, people. Make sure you, uh, you know, send out love, send, send out affection. Make sure that, you know, the people around you know that you care about them. And it's really difficult because, like, my stepfather is about to get a surgery. on. He's got, like, a – anyway, it doesn't matter what it is. But he's getting a surgery and, you know – I have to, he called me like, I need you, you to help me. And, but my thing is like, I don't want to be around my stepfather and my mom. They're of that age that they can get super sick. 
So it's really a catch 22. I'm like telling him like, maybe you should reschedule or we should make other arrangements with like some sort of medical or professional arrangements. Like the, like the, they come pick you up. Cause I just don't want to risk it. I've been on planes. I've been, I was in Chattanooga, you know, my girl still works and she comes, you know, here. So I'm like, damn, I, you know, you don't, you don't even know. I don't feel sick. I ha- I don't feel like I have any symptoms or anything like that. But you see on the internet, there are people who are like, they look fine. And the next thing you know, boom, they, they, they have it. So I just didn't want to risk it. You know, I started this quarantine and I just want to be like, let me get 14, 15, 20 days pass where I don't feel like I have anything. And then I'll be like, okay, I'll go from here straight to my parents to see how they are. But damn. And it's tough because my mom, she's like, you know, she's got this dementia. So it's like, I, I, I was talking to her today. I know she understands because she's like, oh, I haven't been outside and it, it's everywhere. So because the news, like my stepfather's keeping the news on, like, look, look, we can't go outside because she wants to like, oh, I think it'll be fine tomorrow. And then, you know, it's like, oh, she wants to go out. So it's like, you know, just worrying about that is just like a nightmare. So for all those people out there who have like, we're all worried about our parents. If you're of a certain age, if you're 30s, 40s, you worried about your parents because your parents are of an age that they are sus- more susceptible to getting this and having complications. So be safe out there. You know, be safe. Don't 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 risk it because because imagine the guilt of feeling like you got your parents sick and then something happens to them. Ugh. Who wants to deal with that? You know what I mean? I just hope we get back to normal sometime soon. But anyways, that's what I wanted to, that's the beginning part of this is just have some social etiquette. That's all. We got to have virus pandemic etiquette, pandemic etiquette. We got to have that. Okay. So clean your hands, cover your mouth, keep your distance. And all you people still working in food service and all that kind of stuff, be aware of what you're doing because you realize we weren't worrying about that shit at all you know you know it's like i realized when i was in tennessee like i was gonna pay with my credit card and the girl was like oh i'm not gonna touch your credit card can you slide it yourself and turn the screen around and let me slide it and i was like damn then i looked at my credit card and i was like oh that's right so many people touched your credit card so many times like how many times have you ever pulled your credit card out of your wallet and you're like trying to get something and then you put your credit card in your mouth on your lips to hold it and then you like do something or some shit like that. You know, I don't, I don't know if you did. I, I've done that a couple of times. I've done that before. I, I, I can remember the time I was like, Oh, where's my, you know, uh, you know, you think about you've touched a credit card. It's sliding in between this thing that there's other shit there. How, however many people have touched their credit cards in their wallet. So, Clean your credit cards, clean your wallet and clean things that, you know, have been out in public that you've touched before. Like I clean these, I have, I've cleaned the mics, you know, because when I finally, if people want to come over to do my podcast, I'm, I'm still happy to have, you know, certain people that I know come over. But it's like, you know, I'm saying later when it's like when this is c- calm down more, you know, but like other than that, it's like think of all the things that you touch that have been out in public. And it's like your wallet, your phone. And then like, think about like, even at a hotel, they talk about some of the dirtiest things are the phone and the remote control. So like, when's the last time you wiped down your remote control? You know, was it before the pandemic? Because we were still, because sometimes if you just come home, didn't even wash your hands, didn't do shit, plopped down on the couch and then turned on the TV. So you had the day, your day funk is on that remote control. So wipe down your remote controls, everybody. You should wipe down everything, but I'm just start thinking of the things that you go, damn, I've brought the public out into the, onto this thing. Or like, so like wipe your credit cards and your wallet and your purse and like think your keys and like that kind of stuff, you know? And then, then you think about if you're in your car, your steering wheel and like your car area that you were always touching and like, ugh. It's a nightmare. If we, how, like, imagine if this is our new way of life for like a year, where we're just constantly like boom, boom, boom. But maybe that'll maybe that'll be better. We maybe it'll we'll learn and pick up like better habits. You know what I mean? Maybe we'll have better habits, but I don't know. But we'll see. Uh, this is another quick bonus episode for the week, man. Uh, and um, I'm glad you guys are listening. And I'm going to keep making content. Uh, keep talking to y'all. Uh, I want to do one more this week too. So, but for that one, I'd like some questions. So 
I'm going to put up an Instagram post, one of those question posts, or you can send me an email just like in the subject line, just put bonus questions, bonus question, and then I'm going to start answering some questions and talk about some things for the next episode of the week. So this one, I think I'm putting this one out Wednesday. So today's Wednesday (laughs) that when this is out and uh, please uh, send me your comments and uh, send me your questions and uh, let's, um, you know, let's continue to interact and have some fun. But uh, so now what I did was I set up my system, I figured it out and I was able to Skype a couple of my friends. Uh, I Skyped more than a couple, but like the sound is, I'm still working out the kinks in the sound. You know, the the kinks I was working out in the sound of my fucking podcast and look how long it took me. I was like, and there's still a little bit of an echo on this shit, but I'm starting to figure out what it's about. It's about the output source. So I'm figuring that shit out. So the sound on this next section of the podcast is going to be a little wonky, but I'm working this shit out. I don't need your dumbass comments. I got it. Okay. I know. All right. So I called a couple of people and here's some Skype calls from a few of my friends. Um, and just, just to check in with them and see how they're doing. So I hope you enjoy. Okay, everybody. Uh, and you know, we're back, um, uh, back again, uh, Skyping with Griffin. Call another one of my friends, one of my good buddies, Mister uh, Mister Ian Edwards. Hey, Ian. <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? Uh, as you can see, I'm a uh, freaking freaking going crazy. <laughs> how, how, how you dealing? How you dealing? <laughs> uh, yesterday there was like a hint of depression, but it went. It passed. Oh, really? How so? Now. I don't know. I just felt like depressed. I never. I, I never feel depressed, so I can tell when it, it happens. I was like, oh, this is what depression feels like. But then it, it went away. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like I, I, I've, been, I've been feeling that way, too. I've been feeling like like I, there's been times I've been at my house for two days in a row not doing anything, just sitting around. Right. But there's something about being forced to sit around that it, it's making it different. You know what I'm saying? Is that what right. you're kind of feeling? Uh I, I hope that's what it was. I don't know what it was. I, it's 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 not a feeling that I'm used to, and I couldn't exactly pinpoint. You know, maybe maybe it's some of the drugs I've done has affected me chemically. I don't know, but you know, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, it's just some shit that won't come that, back. That won't last. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just I just yeah. feel like all this social distancing. It's like like you you've called me like more than you've ever called. <laughs> you just you know we just be randomly I, calling people like yo no, no, no. what you doing? No 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 you <laughs> you you've called me back more than you've called. <laughs> <laughs> I know I know that's true. Some fucking shit, Ian. I know it's uh it, it's weird. Like Bobby's called me a few times. It's it's what? just like yeah. It's just I like people call him and get my call back from him. Yeah, Jesus Trail called me. You know what I mean? Yeah, Jesus been calling everyone. Yeah, he called it, but I, I'm glad he did call because, like, you know, his mom also has dementia. So, like, we, you know, he right. was just talking, reaching out like that, and I was like, oh man, thanks for reaching out. You know, oh, but if you God. so you have you probably haven't had any problem at the grocery store getting uh, your your nasty ass vegan food. <laughs> wow, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I shop at Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, right? Uh huh. But. I live half a block from Thai Town. So there's a Asian or Thai supermarket that's in the cut on Hollywood Boulevard. And Saturday when I got back into town, I was like, I just I just it just popped in my mind. I said, Don't forget that place, go there. Uh-huh. And I went there and there were no lines and there was a lot of shit. Like they have First of all, it's it's weird because it has the bulk size vegan meats. When I say you got pepper steak, vegan, chicken nuggets, vegan, vegan fish, uh, kung pao chicken, like any type. Like there's a restaurant. So just broccoli, basically, is what they are. (laughs) No, no, no. It's it's like the, the, the processed version of vegan types of chicken and and in bulk. So, and they have vegan shrimp, you know. So I just bought a bunch of those, mm-hmm. and I just eat it with my quinoa or my wild rice and my beans, and just I'll make a pot of rice last week, and I ate that. I just kept on switching the meat substitutes with it, you know, and just you know. So I, I, I'm I'm lucky it's there. I can go back there if I want to, but I've, I've been in the crib, man. I'm not going out. 
Yeah. I, I, I like to go for walks. That's something I haven't been doing. And I've been cooking. You know, I've been cooking mm-hmm. on Instagram, you know, but I, but it's, yeah. been, it's really not for Instagram. It's like I'm cooking because that's how I eat. And right. I, I find myself like, you know, I'm not spending as much money because I don't want to. And I'm also like I find myself slimming down because I'm, I'm eating like, mm-hmm. the you know, a proper meal. And then I'm right. not snacking and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, this, 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 this quarantine and the virus is like. It's, it's terrible, but it's doing wonders for the environment. <laughs> you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not all bad. We needed to slow down anyway. And I, and I wanted to start cooking, and I just couldn't find the time. And then now I'm, like, cooking every day. Yeah. Because I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I, I appreciate, like, all the help, the people out there working and cooking and doing, making takeout meals for people right, to pick up right. and get. But I don't know if they got it, so I'm just going to be cautious. I'm just going to cook. If I if I'm in, I'm in. So I'm just cooking myself, and then it it takes up some of the time of the day to cook myself. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And turns out I'm a decent cook. That's what I said yeah. about myself too. Turns yeah. out, like I've tasted the food, I was like, yeah. well, goddamn. Yeah. Yeah. Some some of you just gotta come wipe me up. I'm a decent. Cook. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody better grab me in there. We're just <laughs> better grab me in there. just so I can cook. Yeah. <laughs> I know, man. Yeah. It's just uh, it's just weird. I don't know if like you know, part of me wants to feel like um, it, it's an overreaction, but then the other part of me feels like you know, because I don't. I, I feel like there's not enough information. There's a lot of misinformation. You know what I'm saying? You want me to explain it to you? Yeah, yeah. Give it to me. All right. So this is what happened. First, they came out and said the thing was the flu because it kind of is, but it it's and it and and it might be just as deadly as the flu. But one thing it is, it's more contagious than the flu. You can catch it airborne if you if you touch something. It it, it lives on surfaces, right? So then you have that. That now there's four hundred. Well, there's 350 million people in America. There's only 1 million hospital beds. There's only 45,000 intensive care units. Mm. So if, if even if, let's, let's play the number game, even if 10% of the population got it in a serious way, right? right. Then the... The, the medical system will be overwhelmed with cases and people who wouldn't die if they were treated will die because they won't be able to get treated. So that's how something that's not as deadly becomes deadly. So, and it's hard for people to make the 180 from this being a flu right. to as serious as it is when they were told in the first place, it's just a flu. But yeah, but it's a numbers game. It, it's just you there's not that many respirators in this country right they have right. To, you know it's like so i think i felt the same i know exactly what you're saying like i'm trying to wrap my brain around it in the same way i feel right. like if they have enough tests to go around then they'd be able to like casually be like okay oh you know first if you feel like you're sick stay at home in quarantine if it's too much mm-hmm. then you go to the hospital it, mm-hmm. Or it should be a thing where we could just grab the test at CVS and be like, you know, right. man, it turns out I got Corona. I got to go home. Once it's right. once it's to that level, then we'll be able to, like, return to normal life. But I hear what you're saying. It's like if, if even if 10 million people got sick all at once, this would be a situation. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be like like a, if 10 million people got it, more than half of that are going to die because – like if they got it seriously, like the serious version, if only 10 million people of the 350 million people in America got the serious version of this, more than half of them would probably die, maybe more, because there's no way to treat them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Shit. So, yeah, it's, wait, it's, it's wait, a numbers game. Wait, way to scare us, Ian. <laughs> Hey, you're welcome, you America. <laughs> That's why you should stay your asses inside. Yeah. Everybody's out there. Yeah. Like, Runyon Canyon is packed. And it's like, stay inside, man. Like, because th- here, here's another thing. A lot of people are worried about, how am I going to pay my rent? So I got to go out and make money. But if you go out and make money this week and, and last week, then they're going to have to do this shit again. And then if you go out that week, then they're going to have to do this shit again. I know. So the, 
then there's going to be more weeks of not making money until everybody does it, until it's done right, and we can clear it out the country. You feel me? Yeah. So the longer you, you might be like, listen, you could probably survive two weeks of no money. But if you keep fucking this up, you ain't going to survive six weeks of no money, eight weeks of no money, ten weeks of no money. The economy is not going to come back. People are going to die. Some of them are your loved ones. So just chill. Just just chill, man. Like, listen, people are like, I talked to somebody today. They worried about their bills. Like, you, those bills will still be there after this. Yeah. You have to focus. You've still about been worried about your bills. Now. <laughs> yeah. And you, you, you was always behind on your payments. <laughs> right, now. right. <laughs> so, so, you know, always behind on your payments. So why are you tripping now? Well, that's a, that's the message. Uh, I think that's a great message. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're handling it the way you are. It's like we're intellectualizing it and trying to like really figure it out and really understand it. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there, and it's like people just don't understand. And you, you, it's not like you know you go to the website a website and go, "What is Corona?" And they, it just it doesn't explain it. It doesn't give people enough peace of mind to be like, "Okay, I think I get what's going on and why I need to stay yeah. inside." So you know, but the overall message: stay inside. Don't spread this. We don't have enough hospital beds. We don't have enough resources sources if everybody got it at the same time yeah exactly people who, who wouldn't normally die from this flu will die and that's just math period well there it is y'all that's uh ian edwards you know we're gonna keep checking in with ian uh you know throughout throughout this whole throughout this whole thing because <laughs> ain't nothing else to do <laughs> listen, listen my, my motto my corona motto is i ain't going out there and it ain't coming in here <laughs> <laughs> you sound like an old black grandma. You're like, hey, ain't gonna get me. <laughs> key keyword keyword is old black grandma. That means they live a long time. Old black grandmas live a long time. That means they got some wisdom and they know what the fuck they talking about. And there's a reason why they become old black grandmas. Uh, you know well, what I'm I appreciate it, man. Uh, th thanks for All taking right. the call. And uh, you know, we'll uh, continue on in, uh, in in the future. And I'll, I'll talk to you again. And so that's Ian Edwards, everybody. Uh, let's hope he stays safe. Okay. Uh, hey guys, uh, back again, and here's uh, one of, another one of my friends. Let's check in and see how Mr. Jeff Ross is doing. Jeff, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> hey, pal. How are you? <laughs> you know, living the quarantine life. Jeff is like an 85 year old man. He can't figure out how to work. <laughs> you got it. There you are. Leave <laughs> the Skype. So. Yeah, you're, now you're cutting your head off. <laughs> I'm up here on the space shuttle. Just want to <laughs> say hi to my family. <laughs> Will you move the camera up a little bit so we can see you f fully? I got pocket. Listen, man, just you don't know how to do technology. Right, right there. Perfect. There you. There he is, everybody. There he is. So, what have you? What have you been doing? How have you been holding up with this quarantine? Um. I've been watching um, Tiger King on Netflix. Have you seen that show? No, I haven't. Everybody's talking about that. Is that is that like a better a better making a murderer? Is that what it's about? It's so. It's just this group of crazy big cat collectors who really hate each other, and it chronicles them all basically trying to kill each other. But oh, I couldn't believe it. It's really cool. I think you'd like it. I'm gonna check that out. What What else have you been watching? I watch a lot of West Wing. I love that show. It makes me feel good. There, Twelve seasons are on Netflix. It goes all the way back like 20 years when presidents used to be really smart. And regal. <laughs> Jeb Bartlett. What's his face? Um, um, uh, Charlie Sheen's dad. What's his name? Yeah. Um, I've got a Martin friend. Sheen Martin plays Sheen, the president, yeah. and he's like the smartest guy in the world. You know, it's funny. I, I find myself mm -hmm. trying to catch up on, like, I, I, I go, let me watch a show that everybody was talking about that I've never watched before. So I'm trying to find, like, what those shows are. You know what I mean? So, like, for West Wing, I never watched West Wing. So you're making me want to, like, oh, I mean, want to watch you get into that. Well, I know you like to talk about politics sometimes in your stand-up. And yeah. this is, is – I learn a lot about politics watching just them, the, the stories. Aaron Sorkin writes it. Oh, and yeah. it has a lot of big political columnists um, – are the consultants on the show. So I've been enjoying that one. And um, I watched some old ones, like uh, I've been watching MASH. 
I've been watching Hogan's Heroes. I'm like yeah. a big kid up here, man. Yeah, MASH is on Hulu right now. I know. MASH is great. It's so funny how that show holds up. Those old school it's shows. so good, man. Yeah. My they mom. don't even make shows that edgy anymore. I know. I don't think they even could. I don't, know if they, I don't think they could. I don't think a show like MASH could be on the air right now. What do you think? I don't think so. There's too much. It's too real about war and stuff. Everybody's. I don't know. I, I'm glad to see you because I, I literally just took an hour walk and I was listening to the news on podcasts and stuff. And I, I, I never get like this. I'm always positive, but I'm fucking pissed off. Like the Republicans and Democrats are arguing over the stimulus package for the people. And I'm like, why is the Senate who's slow as hell all the time always divided? Why are they in charge of emergencies? It seems like the worst idea. This shit should have been planned by a different part of the government a long time ago. I can't believe that this is the, the, we're in politics during the pandemic. I know. These guys I are know. pretending it's a hoax, and then they get the disease. It's like we're watching a bad, a bad movie. And every time I see, like, all those guys standing up at a press conference, I go, where's the social distance? <laughs> like, they're all... It's fucking crazy. <laughs> they're all standing together like that. And you just go, like, are you guys really take, uh, taking all this serious? Then it's, then it's, I, I can... Uh, it doesn't make any sense, man. But then we're in an election year, too. So that's a tough part, too, right? We're in an election. Like, how are we going to do that? Like, are, like, talk about suppressing the vote. They're going to have to make it... They're going to... The, who's going to go vote with those germs? I know. And those germs. <laughs> Those Joe Biden voters, they're all going to die of coronavirus. This is fucking crazy. You feel, I feel like you're a little stir crazy. Like, how, how have you been holding up? I was fine till today, and then everything started to fucking get to me a little bit today. Oh, really? Why, how so? Like, why? why well, the why first, do you think, the, other than the, the first politics? week, everyone's neighborly, you know, you're eating at home, it's fun, it's cute, and you start to get a little nuts. Like, even the dog, where is she? She's right here. Uh, normally, she can hang. She loves getting a little walk, a little pet here and there. But I've been around so much that she's spoiled. And today I opened the door and she just ran out the door and fucking <laughs> almost killed some neighbor's dog for no reason. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm feeling little, I'm feeling it too, man. I've been talking to some other people. I just feel like I feel stir crazy. I feel like and then I'm like, you know, then you find yourself fighting with your loved ones because you don't normally spend. A complete 24 hours with someone. Oh, my God. It's crazy. <laughs> so, like, I found myself, like, I was fighting with my girl. And it's just like, I'm, I'm telling myself, you know what it is? I find that because I don't have that comedy outlet anymore. That, like, you know, we go to the store. We got that 15 minutes to just let out all of our whatever that is. And then when we go back to normal people, all that shit is gone. So now it's like, it's still in me. Like, I, I need to talk shit. I need to... <laughs> I mean, you know, and you're, <laughs> you know what I mean? you're and you, well, I have a particularly bad because I'm an insult comic. Yeah. So I start roasting my girl, <laughs> roasting the fucking inanimate objects around the house. And, and people get mad at me. You know, I can't be making, I can't be roasting the Amazon guy when he shows up. Well, that'd be, actually, you should do that. That'd actually be hilarious. Like, you, you should have a dais set up, you know? So as soon as he opens the door, it's like, it's right there. You're like, all right, look, look who's here. <laughs> The fattest grub hub delivery guy. <laughs> By the way, I got two mystery tacos delivered from Chipotle today. I didn't order them. Then they were outside, so either someone sent me some and didn't write a note. Wait, or wait, they, or, or, you trust in random? I didn't need it. Just tacos at your door, dude? What's wrong? Yeah. Okay, you threw them away, right? I, I put them in the fridge. <laughs> You fat fuck! <laughs> I don't know what to do, man. Uh, are you gonna get? Are you gonna take a poll? What are you gonna do? Like my you know? buddy, my buddy Chris dropped off fucking toilet paper with a birthday hat on it. Was it your birthday? <laughs> no. Oh, it's a great gift. It's just a party, a party roll. So now I guess I'm good till tomorrow. A couple months ago, this company, this booty wipes company, that's the name of the company, booty wipes. So they yeah. they sent me like a big box of like these, like you know. One one shot booty wipes. I'm so glad I have them right now. They're coming in handy, oh, huh? Yeah, they are coming in handy. But I have like a, a <laughs> but I have like a, a one of those like booty washer things too, though. I'm glad you're you're keeping your hygiene up. I mean, you have to. I mean, I'm washing my hands more than I ever have before. Dude, I'm not even showering. I haven't put my I haven't worn a bra in a week. I'm just <laughs> it all hang out. I know my I balls. Think... 
we, what, okay, really? We're going to talk about your balls? Go ahead. Let's hear about your balls. All right, let's hear you about your booty wipes, <laughs> fucking motherfucker. No wonder your girl's mad at you. <laughs> uh, okay, get it out, Jeff. Go ahead. <laughs> Just get- you went from fashion week to fashion reek. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna, this is what we should do. We gotta call our comic friends, talk shit, so we can go back to our girls and be like, "Baby, I love you." <laughs> That's exactly it. Uh, how much money have you lost so far? <laughs> Don't even get me started, man. It's crazy, right? I couldn't even. I couldn't even afford the upgraded Skype. <laughs> <laughs> I know, dude. I just thought, is the last show I'm going to do in a long time? I just did this show, and uh, my last show was in um, the Comedy Catch in, in Chattanooga. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was just a nightmare, you know? There was did, people, like, did people sit five, six feet apart, or no, how'd you do it? actually, they, they, they came, because this was like right before, it was like three days before, it was everybody stay home. Last two weekends ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was two weekends ago. So, you know, it was cool, you know, but I just felt, you felt something in the air, though. You know what I mean? You felt, yeah. you felt the weirdness. I'm, I'm even walk, even when I take a walk, I like to I walk around my neighborhood and, you know, you see somebody coming and I find myself being like, well, let me walk across, walk into the street. You know, we're trying to keep distance because I, I just, people, they're not being polite about their bodily functions, I feel like. No, some people out here. No. I just walked down Ventura Boulevard with the dog, and the only people on the street are are, are crazy people, drug people looking for drugs, and weirdos with with you know bikes that have like a week's supply of food on them. Yeah, just I'm, weirdos. I'm, I'm worried about the homeless problem in LA. Like, what are they doing? Like, are they are they self quarantining? Like, you know, you know, what are they where? Yes, yeah, what I'm saying. Like, how's that even? Working out is that even something that they're even thinking about? That's sixty thousand people right there. At that in the shelters yeah. on the streets. Yeah, it's so just, scary, man. Yeah, man. This is this is uh, it's weird. It's weird times, man. It's weird. That's why time. I always say. That's why I always say, "Fuck the poor." <laughs> oh, is that one of your? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, my "fuck the poor" merch is not selling well <laughs> lately. I don't know what's going on. I'm in a doomsday fucking, you, you know. I can tell, man. You're not yourself. I, I feel I'm staring like- at my dog knowing that, like, in two months, she's she's cute, but in <laughs> two months she'll be fucking surviving by eating my cadaver. <laughs> oh, I know. You had, have you, did you stock up? What did you, did you, what are you doing? Are you cooking at home? Are you ordering out all the time? What are you doing? I've been eating a lot of um, uh, pasta and fruit. I got some stuff here. I'm trying to stock up. I ordered a fancy dinner date night last night. After two weeks, I was like, I need something good. So we ordered Craig's fancy restaurant delivered, and that was nice. But my girl made breakfast, made some egg salad, and we're making do, man. Yeah. Is she, are you guys both just locked in? Have you just been locked in for like this whole time right now? Just like for the past Yeah. Time? Yeah. Luckily, I got a, a yard and, and I can go outside with the dog and walk around. And, you know, my buddy is uh, Seth Green, the, the actor, mm-hmm. producer, and he lives. Um, you've been in my house. So yeah. the, the fence, the fence uh, below me is Seth's fence. Oh, sweet. So it was his uh, brother in law's birthday. So we had a little party, uh, about five, six of us went up to the fence. We each smoked our, smoked our own joints and, uh, and did a social distance birthday for an hour. Oh, just sit, sitting in the, basically sitting in the, in the yard. That's tough. It's tough. What about, I always think about what about those people that had weddings planned? You know, people that had, you know, six months out, they had this wedding. They, they had their March, April wedding or, or bar mitzvahs and like all these kind of like things that just kind of shut down, man. It's or their crazy. Netflix special. Oh, shit. That's right, huh? Supposed to be shooting in a few weeks. Oh, wow. Well, it could be, it could be worse. It could have, it could have. Now been. look at me. I'm on the Eric Griffin fucking <laughs> hostage video. What is this? <laughs> Oh yeah, it takes a it takes a pandemic for you to like come on the podcast, you piece of shit. <laughs> this is this looks like this looks like uh, I'm pleading for my safety with Hezbollah. <laughs> Please, all they give me is apples. Oh man, you know what? I'm gonna let this happen. Go right ahead. I can tell you need this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Uh, Has anybody ever been on a live Skype interview and they're just taking their phone and just threw it over? You'll be the first. Like, <laughs> everyone's like, this is the worst thing. Like, it's not like they're taking our phones away. You know, if it, like we're kind of equipped for this shit between yeah, I know what you mean. Skype and FaceTime and Netflix and Internet. We all kind of are uh, know how to be on our own. Like, you know, you're old enough to know what it was like to be a comedian before the Internet. I don't know if you were doing it back then, but it was lonely. You went on the road. It was you and a book. Yeah, man. And if you found you, you couldn't even make calls out of the hotel, it was too expensive. <laughs> so you had a beeper. You had to go to a pay phone. Like you were low. I know what it's like to, to, to be lonely. So this is not lonely. I mean, this is a treat. I get to talk to my friends. You know, this, this part of it, I have to at least acknowledge we are living in the perfect time. Well, for all this to go down. I, you know, I say yes and no. I, I talked about this earlier. It's just like I feel like we think that we want social distance anyway with our Snapchats and our and how we text and don't call people. But right now, I feel like everybody's stir crazy. I feel like we're starving for like human interaction, you know, and, and this isn't enough. Like it's right. not enough. You know what I mean? Will you touch me? Will you touch me? <laughs> That's just great. Thank you. <laughs> Man. Well, maybe you could- you're. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I, 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 I went to Seven Eleven yesterday. I was so bored. Like I was hot. I'd been walking the dog. I went all the way down to Ventura. I was sweating. So I go into Seven Eleven. There's no one in there but two cops. I'm like, hey. I get a bottle of water. I don't touch anything, but I I get a cold bottle of water. And I get to the counter and I forgot my wallet. I have no cash. So I'm like. Uh, I'm like two miles from home. No money. It's hot out. Wait, wait. You walk, and, uh, two, you walk two miles? Really? Downhill. Really? Downhill. And I had to walk back up the hill. And uh, I asked, like, oh, please, can I have the water? He's like, no. I will, can I have a cup of water? He's like, all right. So now I'm taking an open cup of Corona <laughs> water from the 7-Eleven cashier. And I'm like, this is it. This is how you get it. Dude, you seem to be like super paranoid earlier. I'm surprised that you even, because fr- when this first happened, I called you to do the podcast and you were like, I, I can't, I, 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 I can't go, I can't be near people. And now you're like, you know, you're drinking out of an open trough at, at fucking 7 <laughs> Eleven. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I think my immunities build up or my guts are, I think, I mean, or also I'm like, resign my fate. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I feel you. I'm worried about my parents. Are you, how are your parents? Are your parents alive? What's up with your, you know? They died a long time ago, so I'm one of the lucky ones. <laughs> I don't have to worry about them. Yeah, I'm worried about my parents. My mom's got dementia, so it's like weird to like, you know, she doesn't sort of, she sort of gets it, but then sort of doesn't get it, you know? So I have to like, you know, to keep every day, I got to be able to get the news. You can't go out, you know, because she wants to go to her you know, a relative's house that's not alive. You know what I mean? Oh, and, boy. You know, and it's nowhere around where she is, but she thinks it's down the street, you know? so that's, Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I so hope she's okay. Yeah, my stepdad's with her, so it's like, and he's got to go get surgery. On a, he's got, like, a thing on his nose he's trying to get removed, and he already had the surgery scheduled, so now I got to go. I got to make sure she's okay. So it's like, and I'm worried, like, I've been on the road. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm fine. I don't feel sick or anything like that, but you know how you worry when we travel yeah. so much, we're on planes. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't know. I just think I think comics have like a heavy immune system. I think just because of like being on dirty mics and like you know <laughs> dirty beds and like I think yeah like, yeah I, yeah. I think we've built up a tolerance, but I'm still worried. My main worry about is like I don't want to have something that I could pass on unknowingly to my freaking parents. Man, that is, that is scary. You know, you can't see them. It makes you really appreciate you know physical contact and all the good times. I know because even when they're talking about like these elderly people that get it, they isolate them and then they have to die alone. Like that's oh. like, <laughs> I mean, how fucking brutal is this, man? They, man, they just beat a room. You can't even visit them. You you can't do. You know, they just have to. Hopefully, they survive. If they don't, you're like, you know, you have to look through that little window. Like, bye, mom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh my goodness! <laughs> Wouldn't that be terrible? Fuck, oh my dude. goodness! I know, I know. I, I don't know why we should. We, we, I didn't mean for us to get all morbid, but yeah. we really should be cheering people up. I know we should be cheering people up. Um, I don't know. On the bright side, no more three ways on Pornhub because. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder, has the wait the porn industry can keep going? You know, if they're not worried about AIDS, herpes, crabs, you know. <laughs> no, you know who's making all the money is the webcam girls. Yeah, I thought they were making all the money anyway. David Tell told me on my podcast, he called yesterday, he's like, the webcam girls are making all the money. <laughs> I get it. I can imagine. Why not? 
And they're doing in Vegas, they're doing drive by um, lap dances. Like you can watch from your car for a hundred bucks. Who the fuck is that horny? <laughs> Wait, dude, so is your window rolled up and they just like I don't know, man. themselves on your car? <laughs> can you even imagine? What, can you imagine if Vegas, uh, Vegas is shut down? Like, I wonder what that looks like right now. Like, what does that look like? The strip is just empty. Have you even seen a yeah. picture of it? No, but I have. I had a buddy text me some pictures yesterday from Times Square in New York, and it, it is very eerie. Oh man, you know how you were saying you like you have a big house, you have a big beautiful house. You know, I have this. I'm, I'm in like a townhouse. You know, it, it's I have space. Mm -hmm. But Dan, can you imagine being in New York and living in some little? You know how their apartments are so little there. Some of them. I mean that that, yeah. that must be crazy. New Yorkers are stir crazy. A lot of them are trying to get out, get out to the suburbs and. Stay with family, but that's scary too, you know. Yeah, I don't know, man. Well, well, luckily they say it's only another like six months. <laughs> I mean, dude, could you, um, can you imagine, like, like when are we going to get back on stage? Like, what's your thoughts? Like, when do you think we're going to get back on stage? I can't. I, I, it's got to be by the by the by the end of the summer, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, I took a break about a year and a half ago to make sure I could to see if I needed comedy or this comedy, is it owned me or do I own it? And I took a break and I felt good to take a break. So even though I'm supposed to be on tour right now and the bulk of my year has been cut off, um, I like knowing that I can stop and be okay. You know, that I don't get the itch too bad. Mm, I feel you, man. I, I, yeah. I'm feeling it. I feel... I didn't realize how like addicting and how much that is the thing that I did. Like, you know, three, four times a week, we're at the comedy store, the laugh factory, the improv, you know, wherever we just know we're going to have like shows and you get that, that, that rush to not have that. I didn't, I didn't think it would be a thing, but I'm realizing it is a thing. <laughs> it's a fucking, yeah, it is a thing, it's man. A and thing, right? you got to try to channel it into some other thing. You know, it's a good time to write something else or, you know, even as simple as, downloading into your brain other influences different movies that you always want to see or yeah. i know dare i say read a book or or learn an instrument just just write a love letter do something that you, that you never thought you would have time to do and you'll wind up you'll wind up making the most out of it i'm a big silver linings guy like today was rough and i'm a little batty today but i always try to see some silver lining in this kind of stuff right i feel you I, I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm trying to be that way, too. I find myself meditating at night just when I'm feeling... Because at night is when I start to feel it. When I'm right before yeah. I'm going to bed, I'm starting to feel like, oh, my God, what's going to happen tomorrow? And I start to, like, spiral. And then I just turn on one of these sleep meditations that I have. And then, you know, you just, like, you do your meditation breath. And you just go, okay, you know what? It's going to be fine tomorrow. I'm going to be okay. And, oh, that's good. Yeah. So I, I do recommend that kind of stuff. There's so many of them. You can just go on YouTube. It's like any of those things that, like sleep meditation a guided meditation to go to sleep those are pretty good because they they get you in tune with your body and like they'll be like you know feel your hands and feel your feet and your inner you know and then you when when it's done you're like oh shit i'm actually not thinking about my impending death <laughs> wow so you just put sleep meditation into into the thing yeah man just play like uh you know on on, on your phone man on youtube you can find any of them just look up like guided meditation uh, guided sleep meditation and you'll be surprised how um how helpful it'll be i feel like we just made a uh, sleep meditation video <laughs> for your fans <laughs> oh man you piece of shit <laughs> this is uh this is fun man so we get the tour i love i love uh yeah, I'm walking into my office to find a joint. <laughs> At least the pot store is having closed. Oh, that would be Armageddon. If they, so if you lose the internet and pot, you're done? I mean, that would be that would be crazy. Well, <clears throat> but um, we're survivors. Americans are survivors, man. Yeah. You know, uh, I thought after 9-11, there's a minute in there where too, where I was like, "Am I ever going to work again?" And then, and then you go, "You know what? It almost makes it people appreciate comedy even more when you come back because they haven't seen you. They, they've been cooped up. They want to see a live show. Yeah. 
So it works out from that perspective. In that, in that you know, people are fucking canceling comics, picking on comics. Like, it's all right if we go away a little bit, and then you know, and 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 people miss us a little bit. Yeah, it's just like sports too. I miss sports a lot too, man. I really miss sports. I miss like just the the I I I listen to those like sports uh, debate shows every single day, and like yeah. they're still going and they're still talking about football as if that's going to happen. So like I think it's all wishful thinking because I don't really think the NFL is going to go on either. You know when it, when it comes, but for right now they're acting like it is, and it's just it's a weird it's it's weird, man. It's really weird. That's why I, I, you don't know what's going to take off, what's going to come back. The late night hosts are even doing their shows remotely, so no one's really getting it chance to even miss them and, and and i think it's good that the comedians are staying on their podcast and stuff because i mean you don't want to feel isolated there's people who definitely rely on comedy to get through their fucking day at least you know you're in your nice house whatever but like some people they would go to school to get away from abusive yeah. parents and how about like fucking nagging Abusive husbands, wives, who knows? Right, so, right, right. I feel like, like a lot of people are, are really, like, need something to put into their ears and and get a little mental vacation, even if they can't go on a physical walk or whatever. Yeah, man. No, I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that you think like that. And I think that that's, I think everybody out there is like, I think this is also a time to connect. I think it's important to, like, call loved ones or even just friends you haven't talked to in a while because, look, we're here. We're home. We're not doing shit. You know, it's like when I call somebody now and they don't answer, I go, okay, you purposely ain't answering. <laughs> it's like, motherfucker, you're home, okay? Your ass is home. So don't fucking tell me you can't answer my call. So it's, it's like a, you know what I mean? It's a, it's a, it's a weird thing. That's a good point, man. You know, everybody's home. Yeah, everybody's home. So when, number, when I'm not getting that call from somebody... <laughs> <laughs> looks like you're leaning, it looks like you're leaning on my shoulder like we're like we're <laughs> oh kumbaya <laughs> well this is a good one man i appreciate you taking the call you know oh don't start what you can't finish <laughs> uh, love it i appreciate uh, you taking the call and i feel like we should do it again in like you know a couple more weeks so uh, i'm just yeah, like hell yeah call, call me anytime yeah buddy. i'm calling you, a bunch of people say hi. i just want to say hi i'm just checking in and i think this is good content for people to, so we can see like here's what we're thinking too we're normal we have the same thought processes we got the same fears we got the same uh you know this the same anxiety that everybody else has and i think it's okay to feel those things i think you're right i think you're absolutely right <laughs> That's why I'm going to uh, burn my arm, just for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. This has been Jeff Ross. Uh, signing off. <laughs> I'm signing off. I appreciate you coming on, man. I appreciate you coming on. and uh, Riffin' with Griffin. Love you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, all right, man. We'll talk soon, all right? All right. All right, take care. And there it is, y'all. That was it. That was uh, Ian Edwards and... My good old buddy, Jeff Ross. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. And I'm going to have more of those. And I hope you enjoyed the, you know, this episode of your favorite podcast. You know the name. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Riffin Friday.